Hello again, I am Blunty. Now then, if you've not seen my earlier installments in this series of videos reviewing the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, they might be worth a look before diving in here to give you a frame of reference. Anyway, what I've got here for you is a bunch of ungraded ProRes footage right off the Pocket Cinema Camera's card, and I'm comparing it directly against simultaneously recorded material from the HDMI output feed into an Atomos Ninja 2 unit, set to record at its highest possible setting, ProRes 422. And what I'd hoped to find with this series of tests is that the white orb and black spot issues we talked about in the previous videos would be limited to the internal processing or encoding of the camera itself and thus providing a relatively easy way to skirt around those issues when needed. Sadly though, I have to report that the issues persist throughout the chain and are indeed fed right out of the HDMI too. So that's the, well, it's not really bad news as such, but it's not the awesome breakthrough I'd hoped for. The good news is the HDMI out feed is utterly pristine. So if you do want, or indeed need, to spit your footage onto an external recorder, it's all gravy. Interestingly, there seems to be no image quality benefit of doing so. The internal recording is terrifically clean, and I don't know about your eyes, but to mine, the two recordings are indistinguishable. But, as I discussed in my review videos, it is a rather hungry camera, eating up 32 gigabytes of SD card space with as little as 20 odd minutes of footage. So while you don't actually scrape out any perceptible quality gains using an external recorder like the Atomos Ninja 2, it does have two main benefits. Number one, the Ninja's screen is far easier to see while under the blazing sun, and you can reposition it of course, making very high or very low angle shooting easier, or just moving it to avoid the glare. But number two, you also get to record direct to laptop hard drives or indeed SSDs. And these are much, much larger recording media, which are also cheaper when you do the dollar per gigabyte math as well. So for more significant productions where you're rigging up the pocket cinema camera for a day's worth of shooting rather than sort of quick take handheld high mobility run and gun kind of stuff, the pocket cinema camera will serve you very well. It will deliver excellent quality and will still save you some bulk and weight over its larger siblings in similar rigs. And of course also means you can freely mix and match footage recorded internally or externally without missing a beat. And while I didn't quite get the results I was hoping for out of these tests, they were still worth doing anyway. So coming up in my continuing experiments and tests with the BMPCC, I'll look at manual lenses, C-mount lenses and adapted DSLR lenses, plus shooting it up against the GH3 and the new Canon 70D and the pocket rocket of the Sony RX100 because well, that's what you folks asked for. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I am Blunty and I'll catch you next time.